All right. So we are um, we're about to talk about laser beam measurement and laser beam quality measurement. So talking about the system here shown on this slide, the beam edge M squared. That's a laser profile scanning system to measure laser quality. I have the system running here. So first, a couple of slides, and then we'll jump to the, uh, the presentation, the live demo of this, uh, of this system. OK, uh, quick agenda. Who we are as a company? Agenda IKEO. Then what is the M squared factor? What is this, this, uh, this quantity? What does that tell me about my process, my beam quality, my application? Some application examples. Uh, then the key feature of this system, which is really easy to use, and the live demo. Get the software ready. Make sure your laser beam is aligned properly. Uh, subtract the background noise with the camera included, make a rapid scan, and then an ISO compliant scan. Scan meaning that we'll make several beam diameter measurements along the z-axis, along the propagation axis of my laser beam. And then how to generate reports with your uh, measurements and share that with your colleagues, your customers, and so on. And then the next steps. Next step, basically, if you guys can come join us in the breakout room, we'll be really happy to share about your needs. What do you do? How do you do it? What kind of lizard beam diagnostics tools do you, do you use? And um, we're also giving away a product, a Gentech EO laser power meter there. So please join the breakout room. We'll send you the link for you to participate to the, uh, to the giveaway. All right. So who we are as a company, Gentech EO, we're um, around since the, we've been around since the 70s, providing beam providers, power energy meters, high laser power measurement tools. We are headquarters and located in Quebec City in Canada, covering a worldwide market with three calibration centers in, in three different continents. We are accredited ISO 17025, meaning that we do manufacture our own products and we do calibrate them as well. Okay, we cover pretty much everything laser from consumer market to medical, manufacturing, uh, directed energy, scientific, we pride ourselves to provide a NIST traceability with every standard device, off-the-shelf device that comes from with a, that comes with a NIST traceability. Um, okay, so, so what is this M squared factor? It is a dimensionless number that represents the beam quality. We'll see in the next slide. Um, what, ex what kind of equation do we have? Really simple. Um, what kind of equation derives this number and how do we get to this number? It quantifies three things. First, how close my laser beam is to an ideal Gaussian beam. Then how tightly a collimated laser beam of a given diameter can be focused to get the smallest beam waste as possible. And then how well a divergence laser source can be collimated um, and get the largest relay range as possible. Really depends on your application. Um, and really depend on what you want to achieve. If your goal in life for your business, for your application and your research is to get as close as a Gaussian beam as possible, you will want the M squared value to be as close as one, once to Y, will to Y in a minute. So this measurement of the M squared value relies on direct measurement of the minimum focus side, the beam waste, the minimum, the minimum size I can achieve with my beam diameter, and the divergence in the far field. All right. So a couple of equations are really simple. Once you know your beam waste, so W0 and your divergence, theta zero, you just multiply those two quantities and you get what we call the beam parameter product, BPP. The BPP measured W by theta, and you divide this by the beam parameter product of a theoretical Gaussian beam, which is equal by definition to uh, lambda over pi, the, lem the wavelength of your laser beam divided by pi. That's the beam parameter product of an ideal Gaussian beam. So you take your beam parameter product measured and you divide by this, lambda over pi, and you get by definition a value that's above one. So once again, if you want to achieve the highest beam quality as possible with your Gaussian beam, you will want this value to be as close as one as possible. OK? A couple of examples where this is relevant. Um, with the blue rectangles, the other uh, showing the uh, quantities that are important for you to, to, to check. Uh, for example, let, let's take printing, engraving, cutting, welding, additive manufacturing, where typically you will want your laser power density to be as high as possible where at, at, the, at the given spot, exactly where you want your weld to be done, your cutting, cutting your material, you will want the highest um, power laser power density. So the beam waste, has to be as small as possible. That's, that's the real quantity in this case. A couple of examples here of applications, but let us know what you do exactly. That, that's how it works. You tell us about your requirements. What do you do? What are you trying to achieve? And we'll find the right measurement tool for, uh, for those needs. 
okay, uh, quickly, so uh, we kind of want to jump to the, uh, to the live demo fast. So uh, some key feature of this system, it's a CMOS-based sensor. Uh, we're using a camera so to cover visible and near IR wavelengths. Uh, it comes with a set of three ND filters to avoid saturation to the camera. So basically, once you find the right combination of ND filters, you leave them, leave them there, and you have the proper attenuation for your uh, scanning. Um, it comes as well with a set of five lenses. Why that? Because you will want to uh, focus your laser beam to a spot, to um, your beam waist, for the beam waist to be roughly in the middle of the course of your moving stage. Could that kind of system, once again, we're scanning a laser beam, we're taking beam diameter measurement along the propagation axis. So we'll need the camera to move along the z-axis. And to do that, to do that properly and measure the m-square, you will want the beam waist to be roughly in the middle of the course of your moving stage. So you can scan for the waist and after the waist, namely uh, between minus three, plus three really ranges, which is a definition of the, uh, the size of your focal area. Um, yeah, okay, let's move on to the, uh, to the next. Uh, okay, so that's a picture of my setup here. We're using, so this system comes with large optics, two inches optics that really helps for alignment. And we provide this tool here that you screw in front of the iris. Uh, you get two apertures there. You just need to illuminate the aperture one, aperture two with your laser beam. That will tell you the beam is properly aligned going to the system. So that's provided with the, uh, with the system here. Um, so quickly, I have my laser on the top right of the picture there, hitting the first mirror there, a second mirror there. Those two first mirrors, they're not included in the system. They're with my demo set here. But the first entry point of the m squared system there is the M1. M1, M2 mirrors, they come with the system as a standard solution. And the filters, you see those three elements, and then the iris, and then the lens that you've selected for your uh, specific application here. OK, let's move on to the live demo. Okay. So first of all, let me grab my software here, which is there, which is the welcome window of my beam profiling software that works with, uh, with this system. The first, need, the first thing you need to, to do, really simple, uh, press this button here, start capture. This will display my beam live. So I'm here, I have a 3D view of my beam profile. I can go 2D and with the definition of the X and Y axis. And all you need to do there at this point to get the software ready, you go to the M squared um, menu, hearing the moving stage there, that, uh, that initializing itself. Then all you need to do is enter your laser wavelength. That's um, a helium neon uh, laser here. So 632.8 nanometers and the focal length, the focal length of the lens, the lens that I've used here in the entrance of the system, which is 250 millimeter in the focal length, okay? Um, you will want to verify that your beam is properly aligned. Um, let's say that you're closest to the lens as possible and to the maximum position. You will want to be sure that your beam remains in your region of interest there. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to press this arrow here. So that will scan my laser beam. So going at the waist right now, then away from the waist and at one extremity. So yeah, my laser beam stays within the course of the moving stage. No problem. It's within my ROI, region of interest. Um, then what I'm going to do is perform a background subtraction with this button here. It's really simple. I'm going to press that button. Software will tell me that I need to block my laser beam, which I'm going to do with my card here. Press. So blocking the beam, pressing OK. Software will acquire 10 frames, make an average of those 10 frames, and subtract the average to the actual signal. There, there you have a nice uh, signal-to-noise ratio as maximum as possible and a uh, good definition of the X and the Y axis, which is all automatic. So now let's do a rapid scan. What I, will, what I want to know first is where is my beam waist, the, mi the minimum size of my laser beam, where, where that is. So I'm going to tell the software, give me 10 points of measurement and scan the entire range. And that will just tell me where my beam waist is. So okay, press start. So then you'll see the software, the, um, the range, the, uh, the moving stage will uh, go to the, uh, the closest to the lens as possible, and then start to measure the beam diameters, beam X and Y. And you will see the measurement there displayed in this window here. So that's the index of the measurement, distance between the lens and the camera sensor. The um, X diameter measurement in, uh, in uh, micrometers, so the X and Y and the exposure time that's automatically set, exposure time required to get 
85% of the saturation level of the camera. Why 85%? That's to have a good signal to noise ratio. Exposure time is set automatically to get to 85% of saturation level, good signal to noise ratio, and avoid saturation. So as soon as I have five points of measurement along my propagation axis, um, the software is starting to um, run the hyperbolic fit within the points of measurement. So in the red, I have my Y diameter measurements, and in blue, this is the X uh, diameter measurements. So see that? I'm starting to see already where is my waist, where is the smallest uh, beam uh, dimension, so the, uh, the, the smallest size I can achieve with my laser beam. This is, this is here. And it's telling me that so this, those are my relay ranges, minus two, minus three, and will give me a really good overview of my beam propagation uh, behavior. So uh, 10 points of measurement, so that will end up soon. Okay, automatic stage and square routine is done, pretty okay. So it's telling me that I do not have enough points to be ISO compliant. The ISO standard tells you guys that you need at least five points of measurement between the at your rail range, so between minus one plus one rail range, five points, and another set of five five points distributed uh, external to minus two plus two. So long story short, what I'm going to do? I'm going to tell my software, okay, provide me an ISO scan. No, now that you know where is my rail range, do automatically an ISO scan. I don't want I don't want to save my previous data. Okay, so it will start again, but now more closer to the beam waist. So I have more, more points of measurement. You need 10 points of measurement to be ISO standard, to be ISO compliant. Uh, our software recommends, uh, we recommend at least 30 points to have better resolution in measurement, but you can remove points if you like, you can add some points. But then you see starting again the routine, going from one step to another, up to 30. I will use this time here um, to show you a little bit of the interface there. But once again, measuring those beam diameters, different position along the z-axis, X, Y measurement and the export time required. So why do we just go to the setup? Um, why don't we go to the setup um, button here? So it is showing you guys that, yeah, the software is automatically set to auto exposure mode, exposure time mode. Some image orientation options that are not useful here. Some image averaging, that's an option to smooth out the profile of your laser beam. And that also helps to clearly define the X and the Y axis of your beam automatically. So we do recommend to get, uh, to use five to 10 frame per measurement as an average. Active area, that's what I've used. Uh, 768 by 768 square region of interest. That's the size of my uh, window here, basically. Good to get a little bit faster. <laughs> my computer here is USB 2. I'm expecting a new computer shortly. USB 2 is pretty slow. We do recommend you guys to use USB 3. I'm running at about five frames per second right now, which is not, not so good. With USB 3, you can expect at least to double that value. So the measurement run will be much faster. It will take us maybe like two minutes to complete the 30 points right now. With USB 3, it will take less than one minute. But using a region of interest here, making the region smaller on the camera, uh, pixel um, area, that helps to get a little bit faster. So I've selected this area here. Pixel addressing not uh, needed here and uh, gain uh, either ADC level at 12 bit and so, and so on. So home button here, uh, we do provide four sigma ISO compliant measurement of the beam diameters. This is required to run accurate M squared measurement. Um, units in micrometers and you get a live uh, measurement of those uh, beam diameters here in X and Y, effective diameter, electricity orientation, and so on. So, so I'm still running my measurements here. I'm about at 20 points and 30. But what you can see already here in the M squared results window, what you get. So this is dynamically calculating the M squared value. But we will want to have more points than that. See the red range here between minus three. That will go to plus three red range. So we'll have a good scan of the beam diameters. This is compiling, calculating dynamically. But what you see here is a good reminder of the physics going on before the lens, after the lens. What you see here, both in X dimension and Y dimension, you see before the lens and after the lens your measurement, namely uh, the position of your beam waist, which is about one meter away from the, uh, the lens in this case. So that's the distance it takes to my laser to get to its smallest um, size, beam diameter size. So there you get a position, uh, the, so the beam waist itself, um, before the lens. So you, my, the minimum spot size I can achieve with this laser is about 438 microns. 
your relay range dimension, the divergence here, uh, the same after the lens, which is inside of the enclosure of the system. And, um, and then they, your dynamic measurement of the, uh, the M square value. See, so it's a really, really clean um, Gaussian beam that I have here, uh, which is, so yeah, the, the routine is done. Then I have my all my points and I have a really nice 1.016, 1.013 measurement of the M square, really close to one Gaussian beam, really clean, proper uh, Gaussian beam here. Okay, moving on quickly to my next slide. Some online resources, webinar, blog to our website, please go there and any questions, more than happy to help. Thank you very much.